promising as a sign of intelligence, then these two are brilliant. Meet award-winning radio show hosts Jonna Spilbor and Carol Pesci as they interview smart people, offer up a tidbit or two of advice, and even check your horoscope for you. If you're into that kind of bullshit, it's happy hour, live straight up with a twist. Alcohol may or may not have been involved in the making of the show. Please watch responsibly. So were you wearing underwear? Uh, yeah, but they had the wrong day of the week on them. It was really embarrassing. I hate when that happens. Are we, hey. are we on? Oh, are we on? Welcome to Happy Hour. I'm Carol Pesci. And I'm Jonna Spilbor. She is a world-renowned author of the book a Happy Bitch and a Happiness Expert. Yeah, I like to make people happy for a living. Um, doesn't include a happy ending, but I do like to make people happy for a living. And I like to curse, so it works. Yeah, my and John, my fabulous, gorgeous co-host over here, would you like me to go on? No, please, go on. Yeah, okay. Um, she is an attorney, and she is a legal commentator for Fox News. And this show is all about helping you live your best, happiest life. We want to bring you some great content, smart people, share some of our own stories and mm -hmm. silliness not always take ourselves too seriously no. and uh, hopefully we'll walk away a little bit entertained and maybe a little more enlightened as to how we can uh, stress a little less and happy a little more. One other thing you should know is from time to time, mostly her, we'll drop an F-bomb but that's okay because we have sponsors who pay us to swear now, including today's sponsor. So it makes sense that we have a bleep sponsor because you and I have learned that life is not always smooth. We deal with crap sometimes. I mean, crap happens. So we've learned the art of turning crap into gold. I mean, we can't always get to choose what happens to us. We always get to choose what we do with it. So we decided, since we are kind of prone to cursing a little bit, which we've heard is a sign of intelligence, mm -hmm. that if we happen to drop an F-bomb, it will get bleeped and we will get paid. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> crap into gold. <laughs> Turn that crap into gold, absolutely. Okay, we also want to thank our live studio audience for taking time out of their busy day to be here with us today. Thank you very much. And, and uh, to let you know that one of us, this time it's me, stalks Bradley Cooper. So if you take a look around our studio, you may see him somewhere. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so speaking of, uh, of crap, we have with us a very special jar that in uh, the not too distant future will probably be shaking up a martini. Mm -hmm. But in the time being, this is uh, our segment we like to call Crap Chat. And uh, we're gonna just pull something out of here. We don't know what it's going to say and we are just going to speak to it. So uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, big bubble world. Oh, we... <laughs> That's all you, my friend. It is that all is me, but, all we, you. but we kind of talked about it in another episode. Pick another one. All right, pick an, yeah, so Bye -bye. basically, if you missed it, I live in a place she affectionately calls Carol's Big Bubble World, where I don't let any negativity news mean people in this space. So I'm sometimes behind the eight ball on what's going on in the world, but it's all right. I like it that way. And then she'll come along with you and go pop, 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 pop. Just for fun. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, parents and grandparents texting. <laughs> oh, lordy. Mm. Yeah, so I need to share what happened to me uh, just last night. We were getting ready to shoot to this episode here today. And uh, my mom, who is awesome and is just recently into the realm of smartphones and texting, uh, <laughs> sent me a text because she knew we were going to be shooting this episode today. And she said, uh, you know who you should reach out to to have on your show is Ellen. She wrote a book, I Think About Happiness. So I'm reading it and I'm scratching my head going, Ellen no, she, no, she doesn't mean the <laughs> Ellen. Well, maybe she does. So I text her back and say, um, the Ellen? Ellen DeGeneres? And she said, yeah. <laughs> so I replied back and said, okay, I'll, I'll call her in the morning, Mom. <laughs> so she said, well, your radio show was best in the Hudson Valley. I think it would help boost your ratings. Because that's all she needs to do. Hi, can I speak to Ellen? Our show was best in the Hudson Valley. Yeah. And Ellen's going to go, where the f*** is the Hudson Valley? <laughs> so uh, she, I said, okay, yeah, basically I'll call her in the morning, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, her reply was, well, I think she's on uh, the Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> the Twitter so, and Facebook. So, yeah, there you have it. That's my story. Yeah. Anyway, Gotta enough of Mama Chewy. I know. Mom's awesome. And we should actually try that sometime because if she thinks it. it can happen. And that's how it goes because she would get Ellen DeGeneres oh, yeah. because she doesn't know you can't do that. Exactly. So I think we're going to put her on that. That might be a whole other segment. My mother on the phone calling, <laughs> calling <Oprah>. people. <laughs> I know. George Clooney. Yeah, there you, you go. It. All right. So you know how I'm in 
we both are mm -hmm. avid consumers of self-help. Yes. Love to read. I yes. actually hold a physical book in my hand. You listen to all your books, yes. but that's okay. Yes. So, and I've been studying the field of human behavior and happiness, law of attraction, so on for a decade or so. Right. Now. And just a few weeks ago, I came across this guy, Artie Wu, and I have to say, I think I learned more from him in a seven day, I think 15 to 20 minute podcast that I nice. listened to than I've learned combined in 10 years of studying this field. That's pretty powerful. It is pretty powerful. Yeah. This guy is really, really super smart. So what he's here to talk to us today, Artie Wu from PresideLife.com, Preside Life Meditation, is that negative inner voice, that inner critic, that inner bitch that puts you down and gives you a hard time and makes you basically feel like crap about yourself. Do you have one of those? That, I don't know. Anybody ever heard of that at all? I don't know. So what Artie's going to help us do is to understand where that voice really comes from to begin with and understand it's not your fault and also explain how I know this is hard to believe but it's actually there to help us and if we work better with it we can actually turn it around to then help us and not basically be an asshole anymore so um, so Artie Wu welcome to happy hour thank you so much it's great to be with, here with you thank you <laughs> yeah you bet so so let's start with we all have that inner voice that voice of negativity um, where does that come from? Because I know the big thing that I learned from you is the two points basically is it's not your fault and it's actually there to help you. So where does it come from? So uh, my background is, you know, I'm actually not a, a therapist of any kind or any of that stuff. Uh, I have a background in high tech, right? And then I've also been meditating since I was uh, 14, probably over 30 years now. I learned as a child and in specifically meditation uh, several years ago, you know, the, the point of meditation, of course, is just to kind of help to take that chattering voice inside your head, the chattering, nervous, anxious voice, and just calm it down a little so you can get a break. It can get a break. Everyone's tired and exhausted. And, and you, you meditate to kind of quiet the voice. So as I started teaching meditation more and more, I would teach like you know, tens of thousands of people how to do this. Then thousands of them would come back to me and say, okay, this is great, I've quieted the voice, but as I've gotten to know this inner voice in my head better, what I've realized is, uh, you know, I have a separate problem. I was like, okay, well, what's your problem? And people would say to me literally this, that it, my problem I've realized is not that the voice is chattering. The problem is actually that the content of what the voice is saying is negative. And in many cases, very harshly negative. And that actually is why many people can't meditate. I feel like I have no time to meditate. It's like you have five minutes, you can meditate. But the problem most people face is that when you sit quietly for those five minutes or even 30 seconds, it's the inner negative voice, the negative voice that starts snapping at you. And you're just a sitting duck. It's pure torture, which is why most people can't sit for meditation for even 30 seconds. It's not because they can't sit still. It's because they can't sit still and just be an open target, you know, hunting season for the voice to hit them right? With no like pushing off or, or defense against it. That's why most people can't meditate. Tell people is, you know, the litmus test I'll often give them is, okay, you know, if you just take out a piece of paper and just stream of consciousness, write out all the nasty things you will tend to say to yourself over the course of a day, right? Don't even read it. Just like raw stream of consciousness. Don't even edit it. And then when you're done, don't read it. Just rip it out, hand it to your spouse, your husband, your partner or whatever, and say, okay, read it out loud back to and if you were to start that, and then everyone around you would be like, whoa, 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 buddy, time out, you foul, you know, flags on the field, right? Where it's like, dude, I don't know what you're reading, but you cannot say that to a being, let alone your partner, right? What the hell is that? Right? And it, it turns out to be yourself internally, right? So if you did that thought experiment and you were anywhere in the same galaxy as what I just described, then you do have this inner negative voice. And it's not your fault. It's just a wound like any other. Um, but this inner voice that's inside of you, uh, it's a part of you, right? I mean, so if you die, it dies, right? So its interests are definitely aligned with yours, right? And it loves you. So why does it say these nasty things? It says these nasty things because it, it actually thinks in its own you know, mind or head that it's helping, right? It thinks that this reading off of is what it's supposed to be reading off of to you. Uh, and most of the time, you know, we pick the script up in childhood, right, from the grown-ups around us. 
uh, and how they talk to us reflects back and imprints how we talk to ourselves uh, internally, right? So you, to think of it, it's, it's sort of like this part of you that is like this little, when I teach seventh and eighth graders this, right? I call this voice their little Dobby, right? From Harry Potter, like Dobby the house elf that's following you around trying to help you, right? But if it hasn't gotten the right marching orders, right? If it's gotten its wires crossed or it's confused or something, it's very powerful, right? The thing with Dobby is, is very powerful. Um, if you don't keep an eye on him, he'll start casting random spells all over the place uh, and just make a big mess of things. So you need to stay in close touch with him. Right? Don't kick Dobby, please. Uh, but to check out what it is he's doing, why he thinks he's doing it, and then try to come into reconciliation with that part of yourself uh, again. And, and something else that you say is it's not going mm -hmm. to work if you just try to shut it up. And I think that's our initial reaction because it doesn't right. feel good. It's annoying. It's mean. We're saying things to ourselves we would never say to people we love. And we just we basically tell it to shut up. And you're saying that's not going to work because it's a part of you. You're actually cutting off a part of you. And if there's ever a case for why you're feeling like you're not enough, that's probably it because you're cutting off this very valid point part of you. So rather than cutting it off, working with it and say, okay, um, you do belong here. I know you're really looking out for my best interest. You're really trying to protect me because you want me to do well, albeit maybe you're a little misdirected. So how about we talk about a more positive, better dialogue. You work with it rather than shutting it up. Is that accurate? That's right. And, you know, the reason we will have this very natural, very reasonable impulse to kind of shut it up is because you hear it as a voice in your head and you assume it's you. And because it's in your head, it's true, right? Which in reality, it's not. And we can talk about that, right? But because you think it's true, it's done. There's nothing to be changed there. So and it's still kind of snapping at you, shut it up. I really believe it's true. And, and you're not looking at the certificate of authenticity, right? At the serial number at the bottom of the script that's being read to you. Then what choice do you have? You have to shut it up. You have to drink, you have to use substances, you have to distract yourself with, you know, sex and relationships and texting and shopping or whatever. This is all perfectly reasonable behavior right? Thank if God. you believe, or if you are <laughs> under the, 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 the sort of belief that it's actually certifiably true, and it's just not, right? I mean, it, the way to think about it is, is that there's a part of you, there's, there's the Dobby, right? Script that he's handed. And what happens is that when you're a child, you are basically handed the script and, and you know, your worldview, everything is, is sort of handed to you. And if and typically it's the parents, right? If the parents around you, the adults around you, hand you this self-negative script, print it, and that's what you will say to yourself for the rest of your life until you find it and fix it and, and re-script it. And by the way, when I say it comes from your parents, that doesn't mean it's their fault. Your parents were also children once, right? And they were not born. They did not come out of the womb talking like this to themselves either, right? They got it from grandma grandpa. Right. So, oh, so it's grandma, grandpa's fault. Well, kind of not really because grandma and grandpa weren't born talking like this to themselves either. Right. So it goes on back like 50, 100 generations. The, the original cause is like lost to the mists of time. Right. But then when your dad or your mom rips into you like this negative script on you, the actual reason is this. It's because this is how they talk to themselves internally. And we've already said it's not their fault. Right. They got it as kids. But the reason they talk to you in this harsh way is because you are their child, right? And if you are their child, you are an extension of them. That's that you're an extent, you're like a little version of them. And that's why they would, by the way, die for you, right? Because you are them. But then also, if they have this self-negative voice within them, then when they talk to you and they're stressed and they rip into you, they will tend to rip into you language they use to rip into them their own selves internally right so that when i teach this as seventh and eighth graders um what i tell them is so when your dad rips into you what you're actually hearing is a kind of accidental unintentional sneak peek at how he talks to himself internally he's being hector the projector into you and that's why he rips into he saves like the worst for you right but then 
your cousin or your friend by right, coming, you know, playing, uh, coming over after school, he's like a perfect saint to them because they're not him. Right. And he's nice. He's got his like, regular outside mask on. And he's, he's, he's a perfectly nice guy to everyone. But with you behind closed doors, he saves the worst venom because that's what he says to himself internally. And it's not your fault that you picked it up. It's not his fault that he said it to you. Right. And it's not his fault that he picked it up as a child. It's nobody's fault. It's like this you know, inherited uh, uh, gene right, for some chronic uh, condition or your, uh, gene for your hair color, your eye color. It's not your fault but it does get passed through. All right, so I actually have a question and I don't want this to make me sound like an asshole, even though <laughs> it may, but okay. So I understand what you're saying thus far about we have to re-script the mean voice and the mean voice comes by us honestly, but, and, and it means well. But what if your mean voice is actually accurate? For example, what if you are <laughs> Uh, a little overweight and your mean voice tells you that? What if you do make or you have made a couple of bad decisions and your mean voice tells you that? Do we deal with the mean voice differently if the mean voice is actually right? <laughs> That's a great point. So I think that, you know, where the pain of things like that come from, comes from is that, okay, so for me, you know, I could probably go to the gym more. I could probably lose some weight or whatever. I could probably be more successful in whatever I'm doing. Fine. All of that's fine. And you're right. You can make the argument that that's factually accurate. So I could say to you, oh, you know, you could be a better soccer player. Why aren't you a better soccer player? And you're like, well, I'm, I don't play soccer. It's not my thing. So I could say something factually accurate to you about how you're not, you know, good enough at something like soccer, right? And that won't hurt you at all. That won't poke your wound at all because it's completely irrelevant. Right. Why is it irrelevant? Why is soccer irrelevant? But then something about, like you said, like your, your weight or your something, whatever, uh, is relevant. It's because of this. Where you have this voice in your head that says, I will only be lovable if blank. Okay. So in this case, it would be, I will only be lovable if I am slim, hot, and pretty. I will only be lovable if I am rich, prestigious, and drive a fancy car, right? All of these ifs. And the problem with a statement like that is not the blank, right? It's, so it could be, I will only be lovable if I save us all from global warming, right? Save 7 billion people from the planet. That's unassailable, right? Who wouldn't want that? But even that statement would be poisoned. And the reason it's poisoned is because the problem with I will only be lovable if blank. The problem is the if. The if makes love conditional. The if implies, whatever is behind the if doesn't matter. The if implies that you, right, with no accomplishments, before we even find out what your body looks like, before we even find out what your net worth looks like or what your accomplishments or what college you got into, before we know any of that, it implies that you as you are or any of that are the of love and that is bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it's not true right right the baby comes out right you're holding your, your your newborn in the hospital and you love it without condition you don't say hey i'm gonna wait and see whether you get into harvard to decide whether i love you Fuck that. That's fucking not true. <laughs> i love this great guy. point i great love point. this guy so that's how you love yourself too Right? But then you get this voice installed in you. And part of the script is, ah, you will only be lovable, right? If you lose 10 pounds or whatever, which is totally ludicrous, right? But, but it's in the script. If it's in the script, it gets repeated. And then you start to, you know, oh, maybe I should lose five pounds, right? Maybe, and everyone looks at you like, I can't tell, but you can tell. Why can you tell? And why does it even fucking matter? <laughs> and and city media or whatever, that got baked into our script. Soccer. Soccer did not get baked into our script. And if it did get baked into our script, we'd all be on the soccer field, you know, like doing soccer instead of soul cycle. You see what I mean? Yeah, right. So yeah. Baked in the script is what you end up running for your life on. Oh, I am a little over it. It is accurate. It's like, okay, you could say it's accurate, but why is it relevant? It's relevant because it got hooked into the part of the script that I will be lovable if. And remember, uh, I happened to talk about the parenting thing earlier in the segment. Remember, your parents would die for you, right? If like 
bad guys from a James Bond movie were about to throw you into a volcano crater, right? Right. Obviously, obviously your parents would intercept them and say, throw me in first, spare her, take me, obviously. Right, every parent, you don't even have to be a human, right? The, the, the mother elephant, the mother bear would do that, right? You don't even have to be a mammal, right? The, the mother chicken will do that for her hands to defend them <laughs> from the fox, okay? This is a universal principle of natural law, right? So, so your parents would absolutely die for you. So their love is unconditional, case closed, right? So it doesn't, oh, and by the way, if you're 10 pounds heavier, they would jump in the volcano for you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? If you were 10 pounds lighter, they would jump in the volcano for you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. You are loved without condition. And that unconditional love is also in you. It's baked into your script, but it's deep down. It's buried by this other sort of, you know, higher level kind of just on after. You're so brilliant, Ari. This is what this is what you help people do. You help them identify those those wounds that are causing us to act out in ways that don't make sense to us, that we don't know, that aren't good for us, and we know it. We don't know how to change it. So you, you help us understand where the wound come from comes from. You help us understand this script is changeable. Don't shut it up, but work with it as if it's part of your team because it's a part of you. And if you feel like you're not enough, it's because you're likely cutting off a part of yourself that just wants to be heard. And all. Of of it, your parents, everything that they said to you, the things you're saying to yourself really come down to, and I know it sounds crazy, but because they all love you and they want you to do well and, and they're, they're misguided, but they want to protect you. So you are, you're so brilliant, Artie. I want to make sure we got to wrap up here. I want to make sure people know how to get more of you, your website, if they want to learn more from you. I could talk to you all day, but we are on a, on a schedule. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you. So the website is called presidelife.com. So preside, like you're presiding over a meeting, life. And uh, this has just been an incredible, wonderful experience. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, Can't you're brilliant. You I feel thank so grateful you. for you. Yeah, uh, brilliant guy. Yeah. I, I, I freaking loved him. I've learned so much from him in just, in just a few short days of listening to his podcast. We, we can learn in just a few short minutes. Because that was a big question I had that he just answered in three it. minutes, basically. I know. Brilliant. Wow. Absolutely brilliant. So um, so this is part of what we're doing here. We want to really learn. It is about the content and the smart mm -hmm. people that we bring in. But as we mentioned, we do want to have fun. Sometimes we, we just f*** around. <laughs> we don't want to take life too seriously all the time. Serious topic, helpful topic, yes. So uh, here is a bit of a sample of us out on the loose. On the loose. A uh, possibility of alcohol being involved. Maybe a little. We're just gonna stick our heads together and drive down Route 9 <laughs> South. And make you wait, wait. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because we look My as good stick as is too long. long. That's just too easy. On Monday, <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know our driver, who you cannot see right now because his face is but he's young and he's hot. He's, he's young and he's really, really good. How did you guys get this driver? Like, how did he manage to end up in your car? Craigslist. <laughs> Money. His father just texted us. Oh, oh, his father <laughs> just texted us? Because, yes, he did. Because it's after 9 o'clock and he has a curfew. How old are you? How old are you? 47. 27. 27 is down. Let's know. He doesn't trust us with oh. his son. I think his father might have been slightly concerned because his son was staying out past curfew and was in the car with two slightly older <laughs> women slightly inebriated trust us with oh, his son oh, no, this 27 who would trust us what the? because we look so good what the? with these airport plates on <laughs> okay. we just landed at Stewart Air Stewart International Airport and that's why our faces are so romantic it's not a fucking runway. It was it's, like, do, do, do. It's a, a, a do. little case that has lights that you put, you clip to your phone. It's do. not, not a fucking runway. Not a runway. Dude. No. And nobody's gonna land a plane there. Please place your bags in the overhead. Not bins. saying there ain't a landing strip involved. I'm blind. But nobody's landing a plane. Still blind. Spot. We're gonna stop and get us a donut. A donut. What? Girl likes her donuts. Among other things. 
driving my truck. Your father's going to bed. Stop texting us! Your father's going to bed, by the way. Driving Our driver's driver. father oh, is you, going to bed. Can you turn on the radio? Driving my Black train. Hi, Uncle. Oh! What the fuck? Cha ching! Mo money! Thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> Boy, we just have no shame, do we? <laughs> Anything for a good time doesn't take much for us. A little bit. Anyway. All right, so we are wrapping up, and we would like to thank today's Bleep sponsor, of course, and not to mention our vast studio audience of one. And of course you for taking the time to tune in and put up with our shenanigans and listen to our show. <laughs> All right, make sure you visit our website, netchicks.tv slash happy hour for some bonus material, the latest in where is Bradley Cooper, and for a chance to register to become part of our live studio audience. Also make sure you check us out on Twitter and Facebook at netchicks.tv. And remember, don't bitch, complain, and blame. Talk about what's right with people, life, and the world. Stop waiting for someone else to do it for you and take charge of your life and attitude. Until next time. Cheers, Cheers bitches. bitches. How's this? No, you're not looking. How's that? Oh. Just one eye. Did I ever tell you I can do that? It's not attractive at all. I can cross one eye. Yeah. Let me see. How do you do oh, that? Oh, God. Let me see. Oh, Are you God. sure? Let me see. Is my skirt too short? Can we see my vajayjay or whatever? Um, vagina. So before we go, we'd like to thank our Bleep sponsor once again. And because I don't know if that sponsor got uh, their money's worth. Wait, because you get it. <laughs> Since I don't know if that sponsor really got their money's worth. No. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, bitches. Do you think we should change up the bitches? Like, what if men start watching? Cheers, pricks. <laughs>